Palestinians send kites dangling coal embers or burning rags across the Gaza border to set fire to farmland and forests in a new tactic that sets a unique challenge to a powerful military that has used deadly force during a Palestinian border protests. The much-awaited summit between Kim Jong-un and U.S. President Donald Trump uh, will be held in Singapore's uh, resort island of Sentosa. The White House confirmed that the venue for the summit between the two leaders will be the Capella Hotel. Russian President Vladimir Putin says that the decision by U.S. President Donald Trump to set up a meet with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un was brave and mature and said that he was expecting a positive outcome. North Korean defector Lee Min-bok, who has been flying anti-Pyongyang leaflets into the north for 15 years using balloons, says that it is alarming how people say that Kim Jong-un has changed and that his image has softened following his inter-Korean summit in May. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was in Paris as he sought to convince European states to abandon a nuclear deal with Iran. He said that Tehran's threats to increase uranium enrichment capacity showed it still planned to destroy Israel. Netanyahu said he had not asked uh, he had not asked France to leave the 2015 Iran deal because he believed that the accord would not survive after the United States pulled out of the deal and reimposed sanctions on Tehran. Protesters opposed to a visit by, to uh, Paris by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu blocked traffic on the Champs Elysees Avenue. Netanyahu was uh, due to visit the Grand Palais Exhibition Centre where he and French uh, President Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel Macron were to officially launch a joint Israel-France cultural season. France's upper house, uh, the Senate adopted contested reforms to French state uh, rail operator the SNCF even as railway workers protested in the streets outside. The bill includes the end of jobs for life, automatic annual pay rises and early retirement rights for new company IRS. A French President Emmanuel Macron said that his phone calls with the US President and other world leaders were just like sausages, better not explain what's inside. Donald Trump Jr., the U.S. President's eldest son, campaigned in West Virginia for the Republican candidate for U.S. Senate. Trump Jr. stumped for West Virginia Attorney General Patrick Morrissey, who is trying to unseat uh, Democrat uh, Joe Manchin. Donald Trump signed a childhood cancer bill into law, surrounded by several young patients and survivors of the disease. The Childhood Cancer Survivorship, Treatment, Access and Research, also called STAR Act, is designed to expand opportunities for pediatric cancer research and improve the quality of life for survivors. Vladimir Putin met Austria, Austrian Chancellor Sebastian Kurz in Vienna during his first foreign trip after being sworn in for a fourth term in office last month. Russian president laid a wreath at the Heroes Monument of the Red Army in central Vienna. In a, in a ceremony, Putin commemorated some 17,000 Soviet soldiers who died in the Vienna Offensive in World War II. Voters in eight U.S. states will select candidates for November's midterm elections, with Democrats eyeing more than a dozen Republican-controlled seats in California and New Jersey as crucial thank to fight to control the Congress. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. What's your name? My name is Akihito George Viyama. Great to see you. Give this to a lady in red.
Italy's new anti-establishment government won its first confidence vote in the upper house Senate after Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte had presented his coalition's agenda of tax cuts and higher welfare spending. Just over a week after neighbouring islands vote to uh, liberalise its laws, British Parliament held an emergency debate on Northern Ireland's highly restrictive abortion rules. Voters in Ireland backed the removal of a constitutional abortion ban at the end of the last month. Turkey and the United States endorsed a roadmap for resolving the issue of Syria's Mambij province. The agreement was reached during a meet with the meet in Washington DC between Turkey's foreign minister and US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Mexico put tariffs on American products ranging from steel to pork and bourbon, retaliating against import duties on metals imposed by President Donald Trump and taking aim at Republican strongholds ahead of US congressional elections in November. EU Commission President Juncker said that the European Union will make sure any measures aimed at counteracting the US trade tariffs on aluminium and steel will not hit Norway. European ministers meeting in Luxembourg were expected to discuss the reform of the EU's common asylum system, but it seemed unlikely they would reach a compromise with the advent of a new hardline government in Italy, further entrenching divided opinions. UN refugee agencies say the death toll from a ship packed with migrants that sank off the Tunisian coast last weekend is likely to rise to more than 100. Peruvian President Martin Vizcarra addressed the resignation of Finance Minister David Tuesta and promised to shift from pursuing a policy of fuel tax hikes to collecting taxes prompting truck and bus drivers to call off plans for a major protest. Residents displaced from the Libyan town of Tawega returned home a few days after reconciliation agreement was signed and over six years after they were forced to leave during the country's uprising. Ivan Duque, the right-wing candidate in Colombia's June 17 presidential elections, campaigned at the border with Venezuela and addressed immigration stemming from Colombia's neighbor and called the Venezuelan government a dictatorship. Venezuelan protests a lack of medicines and supplies in hospitals in front of the Ministry of Health in Caracas. The economic crisis in Venezuela has exploded into a public health emergency, claiming lives of untold number of uh, Venezuelans. Young protesters have joined Jordan's largest protest in years in nightly rallies near the cabinet office in the capital, Amman. For many of the protesters, it is their first taste of political dissent in a country where Thai security has largely succeeded in keeping unrest at bay. Security preparations have been underway in the picturesque Canadian town of La Malbe as officials get ready for the G7 summit where disagreements over tariffs between the US and its partners will be high on agenda. US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo welcomed his Singaporean counterpart Vivian Balakrishnan to the State Department in Washington, D.C. Pompeo told the Foreign Minister that it is good to have him back and they will see him in a couple of weeks, referring to the upcoming U.S.-North Korea summit. Meanwhile, Mike Pompeo also welcomed his Indonesian counterpart, Foreign Minister Retno Masudi, to Washington, D.C. Indonesia is the world's most populous Muslim-majority country and Southeast Asia's biggest economy. Iraq's Prime Minister Heather al-Abadi said that there are plans to secure the country's water resources and there is a water shortage, but not a crisis. He said that Iraq is surprised by Turkey's decision to start holding back water behind its Ilisu Dam earlier than promised. 
Zimbabwe's main opposition marched to the independent election agency demanding reforms it said were vital for a credible vote. It accused President Emerson Nangagwa of using soldiers to campaign for the ruling party in rural areas. Guatemala's Fugue volcano exploded again on Tuesday, sending rescue workers scrambling for cover beneath the smoking peak as the death toll from the weekend's eruption rose to at least 73. Officials say nearly 200 people are missing. Prince Akishino, the second son of Japan's Emperor Akihito and his wife Princess Kiko visited the Honolulu Museum of Art during their first official visit together to the US. The Japanese royal couple is in Hawaii this week as a part of year-long celebrations of the 150th anniversary of the first Japanese immigrants arriving at the islands. A memorial for the victims of the 2004 tsunami is inaugurated in uh, Stockholm in the presence of Swedish King Carl XVI, Gustav, uh, Prime Minister Stefan Löfven, and Thailand's ambassador. Sweden was the country outside Asia most affected by the tsunami, losing 543 nationals. In Dell's External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj, who is on a five-day visit to South Africa, is scheduled to visit the Phoenix Settlement, a South African heritage site, a place where Mahatma Gandhi developed his philosophy of non-violence. She will attend uh, the 125th anniversary commemoration of uh, Mahatma Gandhi's eviction from a train's whites-only compartment. A group of terrorists attacked the army camp of 13 rush rivals and a police station in Bandipura district last evening in Jammu and Kashmir. Reports say that about two to four terrorists fired around eight underbarrel grenade launchers, also called the UBGL, towards the army camp and the police station in Haji. Reports say there have been 16 grenade attacks across Kashmir during the month of Ramzan. In three weeks of halting security operations during Ramzan, 36 people, including 16 terrorists, 10 civilians and 10 armed forces personnel have been killed. India's main opposition party, the Congress, uh, conducted a protest rally by riding bullock carts in India's central Bhopal city against excessive increase in the fuel prices. The Indian Army conducted another flag march in India's northwestern city of Shillong after fresh incidents in the series of communal violence in the state. Disgraced Hollywood filmmaker Harvey Weinstein pleaded not guilty to the charges of rape and sexual assault that he faces. Weinstein appeared in a court in New York yesterday. This case relates to two alleged incidents involving two separate women in 2004 and 2013. Tesla chief executive Elon Musk said that a goal of building 5,000 models uh, per week uh, by the end of June was quite likely as the company's production lines were now demonstrating the ability to build 3,500 vehicles per week. Musk comments come after shareholders re-elected three directors and voted against a proposal to wrest the chairman role from Musk. Hewlett Packard now expects 4,500 to 5,000 employees to leave the company by the end of fiscal 2019 as part of an ongoing restructuring plan. In October 2016, HP's board had approved a restructuring plan to be implemented through fiscal year 2019, under which it had expected around 4,000 job cuts. A cafe outside of Seoul has started serving lattes decorated with frothy images of the Korean leaders. 
The In and Out Cafe also offers customers the chance to take a photo and appear on a latte alongside, uh, along with Kim Jong Un and Moon Jae In. Saudi Arabia issued driving license to women for the first time in decades with the ban on female drivers set to be lifted on the 24th of June. A vote leave Brexit a referendum poster that graffiti artist Banksy has transformed to read Vote to Love is among the highlights of the summer exhibition at the Royal Academy of Arts, which curator opened to the media. British team Pie Face won the 51st World Custard Pie Championship. Beating a sushi team from Japan, watched by large crowds, over 2,000 pies were thrown for fun by the competitors. Yes, Ukraine's foreign ministry urges its citizens to refrain from travelling to Russia for the World Cup, citing threats to personal safety as thousands of Ukrainians plan to travel across the border to watch the sporting competition. As Russian cities put the final touches on their public appearances ahead of the World Cup, edgy clothing company Mother Russia has uh, showcased a t-shirt with the caricatures of every World Cup host city. By making a wolf embody Russia's regional stereotype, Mother Russia pokes fun at FIFA and Russia as a whole. A Game of Thrones actor Jason Momoa, who played the role of Carl Drogo in the show, shared a short clip on a social media platform Instagram with his co-star Emilia Clarke, who plays his wife, captioning it, Moon of my life. Reports added that the duo took the picture during the Game of Thrones closing party. The CFD Awards are fashion's answer to the Oscars and a slew of celebrities were on hand at the ceremony that took place at the Brooklyn Museum. One of the biggest draws of the night was Kim Kardashian West who came to collect the inaugural Influencer Award. Other guests included Kendall, Kendall Jenner, Kate Blanchet and Gigi Hadid. Pop sensations Beyonce and Jay-Z are encouraging their fans to be charitable and do good deeds. The celebrity couple are launching the Be Good Do Good campaign and are giving European fans the chance to win a pair of tickets to their On The Run To Stadium tour, provided they volunteer their time to one of the two charities, the Prince's Trust in the UK and Global Citizen in Mainland Europe.